You're welcome to Reading Brain with Nkayori Day today. And it promises to be another interesting edition. Please stay tuned with us. All right, I would like us to pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you. We thank you because you love us. You have shown us mercy ceaselessly. Father, thank you, Lord. We ask that today you be glorified on this program. Bless everyone that will be part of this program. Use us to speak the truth, your total counsel, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Welcome to Reading Brain with Yinka Ayori Day today. Today I have another guest that will be joining me. He is a, he's a man I've known for years, and uh, I believe uh, God will use him to speak the right thing today. So still on the church choir. Today we are looking at leadership in the church choir. We are looking at leadership in the church choir. How important is the leadership of the church choir to the choir and even to the church of God? And I will do that by reading a scripture. Uh, I would like to read First Chronicles chapter 15, verse 22. And I'll, I'll be reading the NLT version. It says, Kenaniah, the head Levite, was chosen as the choir leader because of his skill. So this one says because of his skill. So a man was chosen over the choir. I'll be waiting for you to send a request, our guest. I, I want him to introduce himself. Oh, good. I've seen that. So I'm going to add it right away. So this man was chosen as a choir leader. So as it was then, still now, of the church choir, we are, they are chosen. So take note of that word, chosen. Ah, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God. You know, experience taught me to start all over again. So you're welcome. We need to go fast to, into what we are doing. So we have, we, we are, before we go into our topic, I would like you to introduce yourself. So can we meet you? Who are you, man of God? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. My introduction is very simple. I'm A.K. Johnson. I, I think I have, have some ideas in music and choir leadership in ministry and of course in serving the lord so it's nice to be with you guys thank you very much ma for inviting me ma thank you oh thank you pastor olawale olukayo de alabi thank you for that hello ma hello sato thank you minister jude rich ebo ceremony good to see you <laughs> it's good you know our own tatakaya they say and they don't know <laughs> So I'm not, I won't go there. It's you don't pleasure. need to know the history. <laughs> so we, we, have, we, have, we have history. <laughs> we have history. So yeah. when we say Tadaka, so some of us, we know what we are talking about. Exactly. Uh, Mr. Jude, good to see you. We thank God for your session the last time. He was the last person that came before you. So we're still on this series. So we have been talking about the church choir. Mm -hmm. And you know, so many things are happening in today's church mm -hmm. choir. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to trace it back to the Bible days when the, David was the first person there that constituted the church choir. Mm -hmm. And so we have talked about so many other things. But we are looking, looking at the leadership of the church choir. So before you join, I, I just read the scripture from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 22, that mm -hmm. talks about a man called Kenaniah. And the Bible says, I, I read NLT, it says that Kenaniah, the Ed Levite was chosen as a choir leader mm. because of his skill. So he was chosen. And today we still have men and women we are chosen as choir leaders to man the affairs of the choir we still have. So we are looking at how important it is to have leaders in the choir. Mm. Then the place of choosing. Do we just choose by sight? Do we just choose? You know, this man, because of his skill. But we, today's choir is more than that. Mm. I think then 
it was not yet under the dispensation of grace mm -hmm. and the rest uh, we are under the dispensation of grace grace brought us in mm -hmm. so grace must speak even at choosing choir leaders mm -hmm. you can't be the choir if you have not tasted that grace mm -hmm. the grace of our lord jesus christ in today's choir i'm talking about today's choir so it's not just because of your skill mm -hmm. it's because of so many things but the start point is a, a man of grace a man saved by grace a woman saved by grace mm -hmm. so you don't just enter into the leadership so many things must be considered before choosing people into the leadership of the church choir because the church choir is secret it's a secret place and people who are coming to lead that place must also sit sacred and the people who are dedicated also mm -hmm. to secret things mm -hmm. to the service of, of god you know serving in the house of god so that is what we are looking at today bringing people into the leadership who are those who are those qualified mm -hmm. is everyone qualified can everybody be choosing to mm -hmm. come into the church choir so let's start with that then i'll bring in other things as we look into mm -hmm. it so let's let, let's hear from you now Great. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, man. I think it's a very uh, important topic that you have brought up that I believe that uh, they've been shot under the carpet for many years uh, in different settings, especially in churches that we are dealing with today. We are dealing with the church choir. So basically, I strongly believe um, from the biblical perspective and um, personal experiences, I believe that um, the leadership of the choir is very key and the mm. specific individuals that we that we also consider to man those offices in the choir in, in the choir is also very crucial to for us to look at. Yeah. I think uh, first and foremost what we need to first look at when we are talking about choir leadership and the selection of choir leadership, we should ask the question who is doing the selection? Because when we're talking about uh, church choir in our current day, uh, we have all kind of choirs. We have, um, uh, if I can use the word mini choir, we have a choir, we have some group of choir that are made of just five people. Another form of choir is made of twenty people. You know, um, uh, you know, and we have some other kind of choir that we call mass choir, made of more than 30 50 and so on and so forth i believe for dif this different uh kind of choir there will be these different uh should i say factors to consider but universally yeah. universally uh, the scripture stands as the foundation to uh, uh choosing choir leader in whatever uh choir uh, the choir looks like it may look like whether six people seven people eight people 20 people 50 people mass choir and all, and all of that so basically i believe that the spirituality of the individuals that will be selected like you have earlier said ma uh, uh is very very key to be considered they are their relationship with god they are you know are they truly born again i believe which we have to start from that very what is their relationship with god like first of foremost but before we go into that who is doing the selection because in some cases or in some settings it's uh, it's uh it's the duty of the pastor the pastor single-handedly you know decides who leads the choir based on the limited understanding he has about music and about choir and how choir you know operates a function so and of course uh, we also can uh should look at the fact that every pastor permit me to bring uh, the pa uh, pastors into this com uh, conversation as well because they play a huge role in who uh finally or uh, uh end up being the choir leader in any church there won't be a choir leader without the role i mean the contribution of the pastor in the process i strongly believe that so is it the choir is it the church uh pastor that is choosing this uh the, the leader in the choir or a group of council of elders, uh, you know, in 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 uh, uh, in uh, agreement with the pastors, you know, uh, ideas on how to bring about the choir leader and all of that. So I think we should look at that because if once we can solve that, uh, I mean, answer that question, we can now go to who and who 
should be uh, a choir leader in any church setting. Some pastors okay. have fast knowledge about music, you understand? And they can, uh, they can based on their experiences, some of our pastors started as choir, choir members yeah. in their tender yeah. age, you know? And of course, they know what it takes to make a choir and to make a choir work and to have a leadership uh, team that's gonna run the choir. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we also have some pastors that don't even have any idea at all. All they want is someone to sing, praise and worship, as long as we have songs going on. They don't have the, uh, the knowledge of the nitty gritties of, on how to form choir and leadership. So if that is answered, then of course, who is qualified to be uh, a choir leader? Yeah, that person or that inv individual has to be a born again Christian they need to have a one-on-one -on -one or personal relationship with the person of Christ, Jesus Christ. They need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because if they don't, if they don't have these uh, qualities um, in place, the choir will run into a lot of trouble eventually. So personal relationship with God, they must have surrendered to, uh, to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and they must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because even the work that they are doing is very, very spiritual. And of course, it's very crucial to the growth of the church. Yeah, basically, they have to be born again. They have to, I'm, I'm repeating that once more. They have to be born again Christians. They have to have personal relationship with God. Evidently, they have to have personal relationship with God. They have to be, uh, to have surrendered their life to Christ. You know, practically, you can see that this person is someone who, who has you know given everything to the lord jesus christ and of course filled with the holy spirit if all of these factors or these qualities are not in place at the initial stage there must be people that can be taught you know in the process of time that can submit to church leadership or the pastor's leadership in order to be taught and yeah. be groomed and be you know so that they can be effective in the work they mm -hmm. have been called to do or the role they will be serving in the church of God. Yeah, basically, before I go Thank to other, other things, yeah. I, I really, I, I like your introduction. It's very important. You know, it differs from churches. Some churches, um, majorly is the church leadership that we choose the leader for the choir also. So like the one you, you mentioned. So thank you for going there. So it, it depends on the tradition or the structure of individual yes. churches so that they determine who choose who yeah. into the office of um, choir leaders yeah. and you know jo, um there's this popular saying by our, our our leader this man one of the greatest leaders of our time yeah. that believe in leadership john maxwell you know yeah. john maxwell said that everything rises and falls on leadership mm -hmm. this same thing applies in the choir. Definitely. If choir, if if you put to a wrong person or wrong, wrong set of people mm -hmm. to be in the leadership of the choir, yes. it goes a wrong way to yes. affect the choir. So that's why it's very important that whoever is making the choice, because men are chosen, yeah. they'll be choose people will be chosen mm -hmm. to come into leadership. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that must be considered after being uh, you, you must be born again what are other things that we must consider those other things i would like us to look mm -hmm. at you know like this man that i, I read kenaniah mm -hmm. from first chronicles 16, 22 mm -hmm. after that he was a choir mm -hmm. leader i used nlt because it was only nlt that put him as Choir leader. Other like New King James says that um Kenaniah, leader of the Levant, was instructor, I mean instructor in charge of the music. Yeah. Instructor. So choir leader. So it, New King James put him as an instructor, instructor because he was skillful. Now, beyond skill, I'd like us to look at every other area. Today's choir is beyond skill. Yeah. It's not only skill is needed yep. to be chosen yep. as a choir leader. So many other things must be considered. Mm -hmm. Considering the fact that this one is born again. Mm -hmm. This one is born. So any from my hand, 
you must be able to model Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. but, but being born again, mm -hmm. yes. Like Apostle Paul said, be ye imitators of me as I imitate Christ. Mm -hmm. So as I follow Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to be able to follow me, that's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So also a choir leader, the same applies to a choir leader. A choir leader must be a person who can model Jesus Christ. The sacred office. Yes, ma'am. The choir dedicated. Mm -hmm. We are one of the dedicated instruments. Mm -hmm. The choir. Mm -hmm. And every member of the choir, the choristers are vessels mm -hmm. of God, dedicated to the service of God. And that service is a sacred service. Mm -hmm. So anyone who is coming to lead such a group of people must be born again and, and model Jesus for mm -hmm. time. I said the word model, meaning that living the lifestyle, mm -hmm. the lifestyle style of jesus yes ma living the same way the apostles were acknowledged at antioch that these are christians mm -hmm. so people should be able to say this our quiet mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so people should be able to say this one is a christian yes ma they will see jesus mm -hmm. in that person mm -hmm. and say this one probably say this is a christian mm -hmm. so that is important not only skill it is not only skill as in the case of kenaniah that we read the first mm -hmm. chronicles 15 22 mm -hmm. not only skill so mm -hmm. let's take note of that yes, so the choice must be by the holy spirit yes, this man was chosen in our own time it must be chosen by you also can be a child of god you can be born again you can be uh, be you can be speaking in tongues if the holy spirit has not chosen mm -hmm. you to lead the choir mm -hmm. That person must not be put in place. Mm. I have my own points now. Mm. These are my own points. It's not only because you are born again. Are you chosen by the Holy Spirit? So mm. putting people in the choir leadership must be people that the Spirit of God is, has chosen to be there. Mm. He has put some people. It's not every born again, not every child of God that is in the choir mm. can, can really lead the choir. Mm. So lack all the attributes of leadership. Mm -hmm. And so, all he knows that if this one, he should go there, he will fumble. Because he might still be struggling with some things in his life. Mm -hmm. You know? Let me stop at that. And let me hear from you. I have some other points on my own end mm -hmm. about other things to look at. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The leadership. So, let, let's hear from you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You've made a very important point as well. And I was also going to talk about that before I go into what I have to say now. I was earlier going to okay. say that, you know, the process of choosing or selecting a leadership in the choir has to be done prayerfully. Mm. I've seen, yeah. I've yeah. seen, I've seen uh, several situations whereby, you know, uh, even the process of choosing the choir leadership by the overall leadership of the church is so manipulative in a way there are other mm. uh, there are other interests you know that has been brought wow. on the plate you know uh in choosing who leads the the, the choir That's choir you know? in any case like you earlier said once there is a fault in the leadership of the church it will definitely affect the leadership of the choir mm. the leadership of the church is like the root of the tree though we see them on, on top of the you know in, in at the forefront but they are the roots in quote unquote if anything is wrong there then they'll be wrong i mean there'll be a wrong decision made or they will make wrong decisions in choosing leadership not only for the choir for any department if the leadership of the church is manipulative if they are not, not submitted to the holy spirit in making decisions as, as it pertains to leadership and every other uh, aspect of the church, it will definitely affect the choir, not just the, only the choir, every department in, in the church. It has to be done prayerfully. And sometimes, you know, from experience as well, the Spirit of the Lord might even choose the person that you least expect for the, for the work. Thank you. Yeah, it might be I the agree with you. Person that doesn't necessarily have the uh, the academic qualification musically, 
in my personal experience, in my personal experience, we're not just talking about the music director alone. We are talking about every individual that forms the structure of the leadership of the choir. Yeah. You know, in my personal experience, there is one time in my life that I think I had, and I believe I had all the technical know-how ideas on how to direct choir, how to lead a choir and all of that. I've, I've, I've had a lot of experiments and practical experiences. And at this particular point in time, it's happened that I didn't have the academic qualification to fit into that position. And the pe people that were in the place of selection had to go by the academic qualification. So they, they ended up choosing someone they thought was fit for the work. Meanwhile, I wouldn't say I was the qualified, but God qualified, I mean, qualified me for the work. So I mm. personally, at the time, I was trusting God to just give me a platform where I can, you know, uh, uh, start um, working as a director of music. I haven't done all my homework. I knew, I knew that I was ready for the work. Eventually, someone else was chosen for the work. And I mm. was actually the person that was to be to be selected for the work but the politics was played in such a way that someone who had a uh, academic qualification studying music somewhere and all of that was you know was chosen and eventually the person could not even perform wow the person wow perform it was already bringing a lot of shame to the church to the H hod of the of the of the team you know it was affecting the standard of work you know oh. but the conditions that were used to choose who was to lead the choir was just based on academic qualification so you cannot compare academic qualification with someone who has been called like you said who whom the holy spirit have chosen for the work who has the heart for the work unfortunately the person couldn't even teach the choir one song at a time that's serious apparently the person was just uh you know was was i mean was in a should i say happened to be studying music because music was the available option for them in the see if they have a call to do uh. music naturally you know necessarily speaking they just happened to be studying music because probably that was one of the cheap courses that was available you know uh in the university yeah, like passion wow. was not there the mm. person doesn't mm. have the uh the talents you know the the, the qualities of uh, music directorship or even leadership it wasn't there so basically it brought a lot of shame on the church until God, you know, in his own miraculous way, walked out some, you know, some, some, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't know how to put it, but it, something just happened that I happened to be uh, in a position to rescue the church. This is a, this is, this is, this is a well-known church. This is a very, this is a very big church. You understand? But I had to humble myself, accept the responsibility, mm of a director of music while i was employed for another a role in the church mm -hmm. and i managed to work and take the choir to a place where it could stand on its own even without me period oh, of sorry, one let me, can i can i ask the question then were you yes, now chosen were you chosen before you started assisting the choir you know when the person couldn't drive the choir mm. were you chosen by the church leadership or you you were just doing your whole without no. you being called upon to do it. Beautiful. There was a situation whereby uh you know, thank you, Ma. You know, at the time, um there was a situation that brought a lot of shame on the choir because the choir could not perform oh. up to the standard that was expected oh. by the overall church authority, you know. Oh. And at the time, uh we you know Know, the way it works in some denomination there's a lot of bureaucracies you have minister in charge you have hod you have all of, all kind of ladders before you even get to the director of music so basically the person in charge of the choir who happens to be the hod of the choir at the time was not uh satisfied with the with the results of the choir at the time you know and 
you know, she, at a point in time, she fled up. She was like, what is happening here? You guys are not doing your job. And um, uh, she, she, she pounced on me, she pounced on everybody else, you know, because she just wanted to get results. But she was not willing to accept the fact that they have recommended and employed the wrong person for the work. So, mm. so it happened that uh, there was uh, a scenario that brought some kind of, you know, uh, you know, when you are blaming the wrong person for the for the right, uh, you know. So at the at the time, I also reacted to the HOD of the of the choir at the time that no 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 don't blame me for uh, for directorship and all of that. That's not my job. I do my job. You know, deal with the right person and reprimand them for what they are not doing or for their you know faults. So at the time, it happened at that time also that, like I said earlier, I was praying to God to give me a platform to 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 you know to introduce myself as a director of music to start something in the directing field. So I re I reacted to the to the HOD of the choir at the time, and at the same time, immediately after the uh, the 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 uh, incident. The spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said to me, AK, but you are praying to me that I should open the door for you. Wow. The one That's orchestrating cool. this door for you. And that door mm. actually led to every other door that ever opened wow. to me in my awesome. journey of directing music for the last 15 years. It for took the me last... internationally, it took me to several nations by the grace of God. You know, it took me to places that I've never, ever, ever dreamt of get, uh, getting to. Just because I was sensitive. I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's why I said this must be filled with the Holy Spirit. I, it's, it, I heard it clearly. A.K. Johnson, you, you told me you need a platform. I'm the one creating the platform for you. I have my reason for making them employ someone else in the first place so that i can prove that i qualify the one i choose hmm. that was the experience and that was and i reacted immediately the holy spirit spoke to me i ran to the hod of the choir and i apologized i'm sorry for reacting the way i reacted it's not because i was being rude i, I just felt it wasn't fair to you know to take blame for what i wasn't responsible for but please whatever you want me to do I will do it. So I started wow. serving without, okay, of course, I was working in a system where we are, we were being paid monthly, you know, and we're being paid very well because they want us to concentrate on the work, not running from club to club, from shows to shows, and wow. come to church altar and, you know, come and make every, everywhere filthy. So they, they needed us to concentrate and focus on the work serving God, you know, and of course, I thank God that I was flexible enough to recognize it was the Holy Spirit of God that was speaking to me. I ran to the HOD of the choir, I apologized, and I told her, whatever you want me to do. So for about two years or so, I worked in the place of a director of music without being paid for the job. And the other, and the other person was still there in that choir? The person was still there. The person was, was, was now indirectly learning from me, you know, oh. because... He only, uh, the, he only was only he only happens to be uh, a student of music. He wasn't necessarily mm. called directing music. Even up to now, he has I don't think he has ever directed any music, any choir after that particular choir. Mm. So and that was how God opened doors for me. So basically, it's all about having people think it's just like you said. It's not just music. A choir leader or a, a music director or whoever you might be, you need to have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm. So that mm. you don't run for money, you don't run for other things, you just do the work that is he called you to do. Just like he called the pastor, you also called, like you said, now, you also called for the work. Yeah, that's what that's the, that's what I can say to that effect. So that your, that your story, eh? Just justify what we are talking about. In fact, I, I don't even know you have such a story like this. Can you see that all this really planned it that you are the one that will talk about this? Praise the Lord. Because the story is a very good example to tell anybody that it's not because of just certain things. That person must be the person the Holy Spirit is choosing. Yes, 
it's it's good any choice must be only goes yeah. choice choice yeah. of leadership in the choir should be choice to be the choice of the holy spirit yes ma'am. it's the one that the holy spirit qualifies yes, that must come into leadership or set of leadership in the choir so i i i love that your yes. your, your your story yes very very good you yes, know so you, you you like you have said now i said it didn't end that just skill mm -hmm. considering other areas other prerequisites of choosing mm -hmm. leadership in the choir you know I, I i want us to look at the place of maturity yeah now we look at spiritual ma maturity is very important mm -hmm. spiritual maturity you can be born again mm -hmm. i said it's more than being born yes. again it's more than being spirit filled mm -hmm. much more are you mature mm -hmm. to, to 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 man the choir are you spiritually matured mm -hmm. over the choir the set of leaders there individual mm -hmm. leader leaders in the choir mm -hmm. and collective leaders of the choir mm -hmm. are they mature there should be people that are foreseen to be matured also spiritually mm -hmm. to lead the affairs of the choir mm -hmm. number one that is i'm looking at the areas of maturity mm -hmm. we also look at psychological maturity mm -hmm. because in the choir ha, you will see different breeds <laughs> ah people with different temperaments yes <laughs> you will see all manner of temperament in fact mm. some some the way they, they will they will address you the, the way they will relate to you too. Mm. some could be so they could disdain you some can talk you down mm -hmm. some can act as if you leader if you don't behave i will, <laughs> I, will I will show you you know so that person must be psychologically mature those yeah. must look at all area of maturity in choosing people having said to the spiritual side also look at that maturity are they matured in that area mm -hmm. is the person emotionally mature yes ma'am is the person emotionally matured yes ma'am to lead people yes ma and uh, my people uh, i'm i'm a yoruba girl from nigeria they will say something in yoruba that uh, only to two at only big day no they are just trying to say that you know you have all manner of people people of different behaviors so you must be able to still lead them mm -hmm. to be able to still lead in respect of what they mm -hmm. do so are you emotionally assured we then do what will make you to say ah i want to step down i don't i don't think i can cope with this set of people mm -hmm. because sometimes you could be frustrated you could see frustration in choir leadership, leading people in the choir. You could be so frustrated. So are you emotionally matured to lead the choir? You know, those are the things we should also look at mm -hmm. psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. musically. Yes, you must also look at the place of musical maturity. Mm -hmm. we, according to our discussion today, that's not the only thing you look at. But to an extent, you may not know everything. You know, I, I, I saw something. Um, I saw a write-up about leadership, and I love it. It, it says that, it talks about leadership. It, um, that it says that leadership is not about being the best. Mm. Leadership is about making everyone all, everyone else better. Yes, ma'am. So leadership is not about being the best, yes, but it's about making everyone else better. Mm -hmm. So when we say musical maturity now, you, you may not be the person that has the highest grade of music. You may not even have theory of music. You may not have any grade of music, maybe RSM or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, Muzon, you may not have anything. Mm -hmm. But musically, you have a sound. Yeah. Some people, yeah. they are self-taught. They, they yeah. taught themselves music theory and the rest. Yeah. They can manage all the, they can teach all the parts. They can take all the soprano tenor bass they can give them their parts mm. so to honest they've grown they're matured mm. in that respect mm. also so those areas so we must maintain balance yeah. in every sphere of maturity mm. in bringing people to leadership in the choir mm -hmm. no babies mm -hmm. no bringing babies mm -hmm. it's not by age when i mean babies they are not matured they are not matured yes ma'am they may be all this in the choir mm -hmm. but when it comes to 
their psyche, when it comes to handling things, when it comes to managing crisis in the mm-hmm. choir, they are babies. Mm-hmm. So people like that must not be chosen mm-hmm. because they can manage. You see crisis day in and night now in mm-hmm. the choir. So that is another area I'm adding to what mm-hmm. we are discussing. Mm-hmm. All round maturity yes. to be incorporated yes. in choosing people into the leadership of the church choir. So what do you also have to say about All that? All right. Thank you very much, Ma. You've said wonderful things about that. I think um, leadership qualities uh, are very essential. Uh, uh, I mean, to be put in consideration when uh, choosing choir leaders. Uh, uh, qualities as, such as uh, love, are they loving? Are they lovable? Mm. You know, do they, do they, do they love themselves, do they love people? Because I personally believe that you cannot lead any group of people if you are not a person that loves, you know? Mm. It's everything is just it's it's boils down to loving love if you're not someone who loves others you can lead just forget it because you will not always meet people that will be up to your standard or to your level in terms of make probably skill knowledge you know technical know-how you know even life general lives you know um uh subjects you will always meet people at different levels now the ability to be able to now bring the whole collection of people together and work with them even when they're not at their best you still make them feel that they are important they are they are significant they are they are useful don't ever make anybody feel oh they are not useful just because they can't sing a line of song the right way or the way you expect them to sing it because that person who cannot sing today i've i've worked with people in my life man I've, I've I've worked with, pe- with people that at the, in the first year when they joined the choir they could not even sing a line of song correctly, but mm. in just about two, three, four years they become people that are doing excellent albums, not just singing solos, not just singing songs in church, because awesome. they felt loved. They felt loved. They don't they don't feel you know uh, condemned. You can correct people. You, you 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 have to choose how you correct them sometimes sometimes you have to correct them with a soft tone you know with a so, you know soft voice and all of that sometimes depending on the on the on the uh should i say the urgency of the situation you may raise your voice to a you know a reasonably you know level a reasonable level that we, they, just to let them know that they are not we are not here to joke for you to be a member yeah. of the yeah. You are here to you are you have to be a soldier. You have to be a soldier. You have to be an athlete. You have to be you have to be flexible as well. You have to be there to you must you must be ready to be corrected. But you have to do it in love. Basically, do it in love. Let people feel loved. That skill is very key. And a lot of leaders lack those uh uh that particular quality. They they just expect you to come and deliver. Don't just expect people to deliver. If you expect people to just come and deliver, you are a user. You just want to use them. You must be ready to be part of their journey from level zero. Accept them the way they are and contribute to their growth. A lot of directors of music, a lot of choir members expect people to be 100% from the world go. No, you have to be able to work with people and help them grow through different phases of that calling or career. That's one thing. I believe that we have to look at that. We also have to look at the fact that a choir leader or choir leaders as a team, each one of them must be teachable. Because sometimes your, your, pastor, your pastor may not know everything about music, but they have a spiritual advantage in terms of leadership. Mm-hmm. Because they are the one who is running the vision of the church. So they see ahead. And I'm going to use one example to just uh, substantiate these points. You know, our pastors may not have all the technical know-how, ideas, and all of that. But they can, they can feel what God is saying. And they, mm. they, they, can, they can tell, I think the choir should do this song based on the need. 
based on the time, based on the season. So the director of music must be such a person that is or uh, probably the, the leaders, the leadership team must be such that are flexible. They are able to come mm. down to the level of the pastor to be able to reason with the pastor because we are at the end of the day, without a church, there's no choir in this case. And for every church, there is an angel of the church who happens to be the pastor. So the pastor comes with an idea at a point in time, my personal experience, uh, we were to do a very major program at the time. And my pastor, and of course, as a director, I was serving as a national director of music for, uh, at the time. You know, the pastor came to me and said, hey, I think we should do this song. We should add this part to the song and we should do this to this. Musically speaking, it wasn't that it became this. But I, I had to creatively, you know, look at its ideas and help fine tune the idea in such a way that it fits into the whole concept that we're trying mm. to, you know, I, I, I execute at the time. And at the, at, at the end of the program, the pastor came to me and said, AK, I thank you because you are a very teachable person. Because I've worked with other wow. directors of music. Just for you to mm. bring an idea, as if you want to take their role. You know, they will fight you. They will see you as, they will see your idea, they will treat your ideas as if it's not musical and it's not, it's not even applicable. It shouldn't be heard and all of that. So a director of music or a leader, I'm using the word director of music because I'm one. So leadership of the choir has to be such that they are teachable because the person that is talking to you may not know everything you know, but they can see ahead of you. So the pastor told me at the time, you know, the guest speaker loves this kind of ministration and this is how he functions. It will help his ministration. So I had to humble myself okay. and buy into the idea and it was a oh. huge success at the end of the day. So. A, a group of leadership in the choir must be such a collection of people that are humble and also are able to learn from the pastor, even if the pastor does not know so much about music. The leadership team also must be flexible to the point that they are able to ask for ideas from the member of the choir, because sometimes some members even know more than the, the leadership exactly. team. Agree. Yeah. They know a lot, but because they are not given a voice to express their ideas, they are silenced. Mm -hmm. They just remain quiet. So the group of leadership must be humble. It's part of the skill, qualities that we must, you know, imbibe to listen to other ideas, even from our members. We can learn, and it will help us build a successful choir. There are other wow. relevant skills as well. There are other relevant skills as well. Interpersonal relationship skills, like you were mentioning the other time. You know, how do you communicate to people? You have to be convincing the group of leadership or the director or the assistant director or the HOD of the choir leadership must be, must be convincing and must be positive in their taste, in the tone and taste of communication, like you were saying earlier. Otherwise, instead of us building people, we end up breaking them. And a broken choir will not serve the church well because they will walk with, you know, a broken heart, uh, a depressed heart. And of course, what do you expect if somebody is depressed, if they feel oppressed because they shared an idea that could help the choir and simply because the leadership is not flexible enough to take ideas from them, they feel silenced or shut up and all of that. So basically, that skill is very key also to... to I, 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 I really appreciate that. That's, yeah. You know, they are talking about love. So the, the leadership of the choir should be open. Yeah. Open to all. Mm -hmm. You know, you should not have... Um, you shouldn't tolerate... Allow. Let me say, you shouldn't tolerate or allow sentimental leadership. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't pitch ten for... I am for Paul, I am for no, Apollos. No, no. Everyone should be, you should have um, carcass, yes. The leadership shouldn't be known to have carcass. Mm. You know, any relationship inside the choir should be inside the choir. Mm. If you are having a relationship with people in the choir, it should be outside of the choir. Mm -hmm. But when those relationships are in the choir, you take them as general, even if your best friend, 
mm. is in the choir. Mm. When it comes to the choir, when that your friend is in the choir, you mm. treat that person as every other person in the choir. So it's part of the leadership skill oh, the that vision. the leader of the choir should learn, yes, you know, not to allow, I mean, sentiment or any other preventive treatment. Yeah, that's where I'm going. You don't know, allow that. No, we're still going to look at things like that. You know, in the choir, something is always mm. common. It's another topic for another day that we are treating. Mm. Some people believe that the leaders have set of people that they believe in. You know that these people can deliver. There are people that just call them like this, just do like this. They know what you are saying. You just drop a song on the choir platform. They will instantly you drop that song. They will score it. And there are others that if you don't beg them, score this song, they are not ready. So we know mm. even some we even tell you they don't know you you sent the song there. Mm. You know, and people tend to see people who are doing it well. We are always there. We're always available as mm. being maybe you are being provincial or something, something like that. Mm. Those those are the things that the choir leaders should guide mm -hmm. against, mm -hmm. not to be traced, mm -hmm. giving some people prevention, mm -hmm. to, so, as to, so as to have a balanced choir, yes. to have a one house, a mm -hmm. choir that has one spirit, mm -hmm. serving God together under that same grace. So mm -hmm. it's very important, like you said. I really desire we can go on and on, but I can see that our time is flying. Yes, ma time, but definitely no, we're still going to have you yeah. before we are we are through with this series. We are bringing two, some choir members. Just say two more want them points. to come and address. Okay, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Briefly, I think um, the choir leadership also uh, in the in their collection, there should be such that uh, they are they are humble. Humility is key in leadership of the choir is one of the qualities or the skill that they can you know learn you know we can learn to be humble no matter how much we know so in in forming this leadership team the i think the the whoever is doing the selection must also work with uh, the knowledge or the consideration for humility yet the individuals in the leadership are not just uh, they're not puppets to anybody they are they are humble yet they are principled and their principle is based on the word of god so they walk with principle yeah. at the same time they are, they are humble and they are yeah. also, they, they are also working with a transitional mindset they are not just traditional stagnated choir that has plateaued i mean are individuals of leader that have told that this is the only way we do this thing here and there's no open we are not like you said earlier they are not open to new ideas you know because we are the lead the, the choir should be moving from glory to glory so they should have transition in mind the leadership of the choir should have transition in mind otherwise the choir will be stagnated and we we'll, eventually we we'll bore the church the pastor will be tired of the of listening to them the church will almost be able to you know uh what is the word now predict what they are going to sing next and all of that so they have to transition they have to be versatile they have to learn from different sources still on the uh on the you know um the, the 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 supervision of the of godliness i will put it that way and of course the people in the leadership of the team also has to be creative they have to that, that's the aspect of creativity has a lot to do in you know if you're going to choose people to be in charge of the choir choose creative people as well they have to be effective you know the effectiveness of the individual you know as a person and of course the collection of the individual Individuals as well. I don't want to mm. take your time. There's there's a lot of things that I have on my on my. Uh, on you, my have, you have some picture. questions there. I can see some questions there. Okay. Oh, from Pastor Ola, uh, Ola Wale, Oluka Yodeyaladi. You know, he has been saying some things. Okay, let me start with. Yeah, the, what, what uh, one is the agreement of render in service among okay. the choir. Okay. 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 Uh, all right, you know, basically, if I can say something about that, um, 
And that's why the, co- the collection of the leadership must be such that they are, they are not self-opinionated and they, and they are not uh, uh, just unnecessarily, you know, uh, uh, authoritative or authoritarian. You understand now? They have to submit the, their will. It's not about anybody's interest in the choice of song to do. A choir should believe that whatever song we do, we are going with the intention of glorifying God and blessing the people of God. It has nothing to do whether it's my favorite, it's my preference, or is your preference, it's my... That's why the leadership is there. So every mem- every part of the ch- I mean, of the choir should know that there are people who have been designated with the assignments to choose songs based on their technical role, the technical role they play in the choir. And even at that, those people in, uh, in, in that office also should be flexible to take ideas from others. At the end of the day, whatever song you choose to sing should be songs that will glorify God, song that is in, in line with the theme of the program or of the service. You understand now? So that it augments the effort of the pastor. It has mm. nothing to do with individualism or, or individuality or what I like, what you don't like. I don't believe that. It has to be with are we glorifying God with this song? Are we in line with the theme of the convention or the Congress or the service or the anniversary? And are we blessing the people of God with this song? Whatever song we sing, it's not what's a song to God. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and before now, I think he said, no babies should be, okay, it's also Pastor Carl, he said, no babies should be seen in the choir. Thanks for that. Okay, man. Uh, there's something he's also said. I uh, said you could be back, oh, so you should come back again. So they want Thank you to you. come back. 